Hi there, John Libanati here with GlutenFreeWorks.com. November is Epilepsy Awareness Month, so this video today is going to talk about the connection between epilepsy and celiac disease or gluten sensitivity. Now about 3.4 million people in the United States have epilepsy, about 65 million people worldwide. And it's interesting to note that about the same amount of people have celiac disease. There's an overlap between celiac disease and epilepsy, and there's also another overlap between epilepsy and celiac disease. So a certain amount of people who have epilepsy will come up having celiac disease, and another certain amount of people who have celiac disease come up having epilepsy. Now, gluten sensitivity has been also implicated in causing epileptic type seizures. So we're gonna look at that as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to our Gluten Free Works Health Guide so I can illustrate how this all works. Uh, now, one thing to tell you, if you go to epilepsy.com, you won't find anything about celiac disease up there uh, or about the gluten-free diet, although they do recommend possibly using a ketogenic diet or an Atkins diet because it helps some people, which is interesting because an Atkins diet and a ketogenic diet are both gluten-free diets. Now, let's go to the Gluten-Free Works Health Guide. Okay, here we are at the Gluten-Free Works Health Guide located at glutenfreeworks.com slash health. And we are looking at epilepsy or convulsions. Uh, now let's look, what is epilepsy? It's a dysfunctional disorder of the brain caused by uh, or characterized by recurring seizures also called convulsions. And what happens during a seizure? That means there is abnormal electrical discharges occurring within the brain. Not all seizures have the same intensity or involvement. They can be generalized, partial, or unclassified. Now the generalized seizures affect both sides of the brain and the individual usually use, loses consciousness. The partial affect one part of the brain and the individual usually is awake. Now what is epilepsy and celiac disease and or gluten sensitivity? It's an associated neurological disorder in celiac disease. Alright, and you can read some of this here that the recurring seizures in the occipital area of the brain with or without calcification, those are deposits in the brain, can develop without the more classic malabsorptive symptoms of celiac disease. The majority of patients have complex partial attacks, so they might stare, they might lose sense of time, uh, they might laugh um, inappropriately and not realize that it's happening. Now it can also uh, involve more areas of the brain than the occipital area and what they found in the research is that celiac disease associated antibodies and gluten sensitivity in patients with refractory focal epilepsy demonstrated a previously unrecognized link between gluten sensitivity and temporal lobe epilepsy with hippocampal sclerosis. Alright, so what does that mean? That means that people who have a problem with gluten they're finding there's a link between that and epilepsy. So then there's some people who develop a syndrome of celiac disease, epilepsy, and cerebral calcifications. These are all based on uh, documented medical research and I'll show you that below. There's a study showing that uh, celiac disease in living patients with epilepsy of unknown etiology, that means they don't know where what causes it, uh, demonstrated the prevalence of celiac disease was increased among patients with epilepsy of unknown etiology. And of them, 80% had supernatural brain atrophy versus 26% of controls. So screening of celiac disease is warranted in patients of epilepsy with unknown etiology where there is no, uh, where there is no known cause. All right, now what's the prevalence? Well, you're looking at about 6%, up to 6% of people with epilepsy have celiac disease in this one study. And the prevalence of epilepsy is 5.5% in patients with celiac disease. So it's very similar uh, going back and forth. It can go as high as 8.1%. And here's another study of 6%. All right. So how does it develop? How does epilepsy develop in celiac disease and or gluten sensitivity? Now, although the mechanism remains obscure, meaning they don't really know exactly how it works, there appears to be related to immunological effects of gluten exposure in the brain. So that's an immune reaction within the brain itself and vitamin deficiencies, in this case, mineral deficiencies, calcium and magnesium and vitamin folate, which is folic acid. Now the syndrome of celiac disease, epilepsy, and cerebral calcifications may be related to underlying folic acid deficiency. 
Does epilepsy respond to a gluten-free diet? Yes, it does respond to a nutritious gluten-free diet. So a gluten-free diet that has these items in it um, helps people. Now we have the six steps to improve epilepsy and celiac disease and or gluten sensitivity. And this section tells you all about that. I won't go into it because it's so long. But I want to really show you the, um, the research studies. Okay. So there are medical research studies that talk about epilepsy and celiac disease and or gluten sensitivity. We gather this information from medical journals around the world. So this might, this isn't necessarily common knowledge with all doctors. Uh, in this first one here, celiac disease with neurological manifestations in children, it looked at 48 children. So this is a small pilot study, uh, age 2 to 18 years, um, and they found cerebral calcifications in three patients with epilepsy uh, and atrophy in two patients with cerebellar uh, ataxia. It means they had poor balance. Uh, now all children received gluten-free diet, but favorable course was noticed only in the children with migraine and epilepsy. And the other patients of this diet having no influence on neurologic symptoms. So this shows that it is worth uh, testing and then also trying the gluten-free diet. Uh, hippocampal sclerosis and refractory temporal lobe epilepsy is associated with gluten sensitivity. Now this doesn't have anything to do with celiac disease, this is gluten sensitivity itself. And what we see is the association, according to the, um, to the study, was very robust in this well-characterized group of patients. Thus, gluten sensitivity should be added to the list of potential mechanisms leading to intractable epilepsy and HS, hippocampal sclerosis. So these doctors came to the conclusion that people who have intractable epilepsy should be tested for gluten sensitivity. Okay, now the next one, neurological symptoms in patients with biopsy-proven celiac disease. Let's just go to see what they found. They found that, uh, that seizures are common occurring in 6% of the patients. Okay, they found that a number of these people had neurological disorders such as migraines, carpal tunnel syndrome, vestibular dysfunction, seizures, 6% again, myelitis, 3%. Uh, stance and gait problems, that's walking problems in about a third of the patients that could be attributed to ataxia. Um, so these people had a number of different issues and 35% of patients with celiac disease showed deep sensory loss and reduced ankle reflexes in 14%. Um, so what this shows is that there is definitely a neurologic effect in celiac disease and a certain number of people are going to have epilepsy. Um, the association with celiac disease and brain atrophy, well we know that brain atrophy occurs in people with celiac disease who are not on a gluten-free diet, so the brain doesn't get what it needs, therefore it shrinks. So this uh, studied, uh, investigated the occurrence of celiac disease in living patients with epilepsy of unknown etiology. That means they don't know where it came from. And it demonstrated the prevalence of celiac disease was increased among patients with epilepsy. And of them, 80% had brain atrophy versus 20% of 26% of controls. So screening of celiac disease seems warranted in patients with epilepsy of unknown etiology where you don't know where it came from. Uh, particularly where there is coexistent cerebral atrophy of unknown etiology. And we have a few more here. The favorable outcome in a child with difficult to control seizures. This is a child who was, had seizures. They couldn't control them. They found celiac disease, put the child on a gluten-free diet, and allowed significant decrease in dosage of anti-epileptic drugs. Okay? Progressive seizure control. The gluten-free diet worked in this way. Now, villus atrophy and idiopathic epilepsy. Idiopathic is another word for we don't know what causes it. Now, this is a case report describing a significant reduction in seizures on a gluten-free diet for one of four patients with celiac disease. All right, so 25%. One in four, you might say, well, that's not everybody. Yeah, but for a certain number of people, this could be the cause or this could be something that could greatly help them, so it should be investigated. We have a number of citations on the uh, in the health guide. So if you wanted to look up this information, 
uh, you go here and then actually look up the actual studies or the research papers or, or give them to your doctor. Now let's look and see what the Epilepsy Foundation says about epilepsy. That is the fourth most common neurologic disorder and affects people of all ages. It means the same thing as seizure disorders. It's characterized by unpredictable seizures, can cause other health problems, is a spectrum condition. Um, and there, it talks about public misunderstandings. Now it says the human brain is the source of human epilepsy. Okay. But nowhere on this website does it talk about a, po a potential connection between celiac disease or gluten sensitivity. Now interestingly, when they talk about treating seizures and epilepsy, you know, the first thing a doctor is going to do is put, put the person on uh, anti-seizure medication. Uh, there will not be any attempt to change diet, all right, so no dietary intervention. But the Epilepsy um, Foundation does go into um, a dietary, a possible dietary intervention. And let's see if I can find that here. Dietary therapy. Let's take a look at that. Okay, dietary therapy is just approach to help control seizures, usually in conjunction with seizure medications, because of course you never want to stop your medications um, without, you know, having a doctor working with you. But they talk about the classic ketogenic diet, high fat, low carb, and then also the modified Atkins diet. Now, interestingly enough, a ketogenic diet and an Atkins diet are both gluten-free diets. So... What that leads me to wonder is, are these people improving because of the diets not containing gluten? Or is it because they're a high protein, high fat diet? My thinking is more likely that it's because you're removing gluten from the diet, especially with those other, um, you know, medical research studies that we looked at and everything that they talked about. Uh, it just seems to make sense. Now, if there is another issue in the brain, you know, there's not enough, um, the myelin sheath in the nerves uh, has an issue, well, then you, and there's not enough fat surrounding the, uh, the nerves themselves, well, then it's going to be like a wire that's just short-circuiting. So it does make sense that they would need a high-fat diet, but I've got an idea that, I've got the idea that maybe it's a perfect storm effect where it's uh, the lack of fat and then also, the gluten itself causing the problems and it you know it would make sense because celiac disease at least is a um, malabsorption disorder and fat malabsorption is one of the uh, primary symptoms so if you're not absorbing fats properly you're not going to absorb omega-3 fatty acids and then your your neurons aren't going to work properly so I know this has gone on a little bit long but I just wanted to uh, let you know about this connection between epilepsy and gluten in the, for, in the forms of uh, the disorders gluten sensitivity and celiac disease and that for some people at least uh, this could be something that could really help them. So all people of epilepsy should be tested or screened for gluten sensitivity and celiac disease just to screen it out. I mean if, it, if it's 6% you're looking at what 1 in 20 people. So even if it's just 1 in 20 people that are helped by this, I mean that's a significant uh, that's a significant amount of people when you're looking at 3.4 million people in the United States alone with epilepsy. All right, this is John Libinati with GlutenFreeWorks.com, and we're looking at the GlutenFreeWorks Health Guide, uh, specifically epilepsy and gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. Thank you.